Good evening to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here. Your second video discussion of the day as we take a look at what's going on in the tropics, tracking Genevieve in the eastern Pacific, uh, and then of course our two systems in the Atlantic, one getting ready to enter into the Atlantic in what is going to be a very busy several days and weeks ahead. Uh, we'll go over what we know now and I'll look at the computer models just a little bit and you know it just continues on like we don't have a consensus still as to what's going to happen so it makes things rather interesting so we'll start off in the east pack real quick genevieve not too far off the coast of the baja and uh, this is important because people live there and there are impacts the wind field now getting pretty close to that area hurricane warning now in effect and this will parallel the baja peninsula bring heavy rain high surf Definitely tangible impacts there, uh, and then this curves north uh, with time, and it's not too far off of Southern California. If the water temperatures weren't so cold up here, uh, I could go out to California for hurricanes at some point. Um, I hope it never comes to that. I like California, but um, that would just be bad, okay? <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So there you go. That's what's happening with uh, Genevieve there. there in the eastern Pacific now we look at the Atlantic you already know we got 97 L here 90 um, 98 L here this will soon be 99 L I am sure and all of this part of that very busy season that we have been talking about for several months now starting to come to fruition all right so my favorite map one of them anyway I love this tool the vorticity signature, this is from my update this morning, 12 UTC, that's the timestamp down there, you see that? So the 12 UTC, that's what the vorticity looked like, and there's 98L right there, there's 97, and there's Genevieve over in the Pacific. So now let's scooch this ahead, scientific term, scooch, move this ahead in time to the, uh, what is that, 18 UTC, pretty sure it's what it said. Um, and you can see what's happened there. We go back just a little bit. There's 12, there's 18, and we're definitely noting more vorticity, a concentration of that energy, bundling it. We're definitely seeing that with 98, and even to some extent here with Invest Area 97. And again, just go back. There they were early this morning. This is mid-afternoon. Things are starting to slowly come together. And we can see that very clearly now, finally. And again, we're not rooting for hurricanes, okay? It's if there's going to be hurricanes, let's put our best foot forward to track them from the tools that we've got uh, as a society, right? As human beings, satellite, first line of defense, and all the different tools from the infrared satellite like we're looking at here to the vorticity signature, the ASCAT, you know, using scatterometer data to get wind flags. And I mean, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. And it's like being a fully loaded for bear, well-funded fire department or EMS unit. You got all this high-tech stuff, the best ambulances, the best fire trucks, the best personnel, the best training. You don't want to have to go deal with a plane crash with 72 fatalities, but and all the chemicals that spill out and just the disaster around that. But doggone it, if it happens, you're going to be ready and you're excited about that prospect. That if the worst happens, you are ready to go. And so that's what we're looking at here. And so when I say finally, you know, we want to be able to track something if it looks like it's going to happen and not all this wishy-washy stuff. I don't have time for that. Um, none of us do this year. We want to be able to hang our hat on something uh, that we can believe in and you know see it in front of our eyes and you know we, we see the models that go out into time two days five days ten days and that's the problem with deterministic and even ensemble models is sometimes they might show a hurricane come barreling through this way another time it might be up here and then after that nothing doesn't develop it at all right we've been through this before so this afternoon early evening clearly we're starting to get some consolidation here with 98L, and I believe this will be upgraded to a depression maybe by 11 p.m. tonight, and I would say as this continues, certainly 
by 5 a.m. tomorrow unless it just falls apart again. For, or not say again, because it's been progressing fairly solidly as it's losing this energy back here. This is where the energy is starting to focus. A lot of deep convection or thunderstorm activity there. And even over here with Invest 97, that is also starting to flare up and concentrate a little bit more. And here's another system coming off that we'll be watching in the days ahead. All right, so let's take a look here at the computer models. This is uh, from 18 UTC, the various and sundry models here. Um, mainly trying to look at what the uh, consensus, and that's these models here, these TVC, either E or A. And so this consensus model is right up into southeast Louisiana. So that's interesting. Um, and I don't see the TVC E, maybe it's right on top of it. Uh, the HWARF, which is the Hurricane Weather Research Forecast Model, that brings it on up into, um, yeah, somewhere near just west of uh, Panama City, that area. And some of the other models are much farther to the west and south. So still a pretty big spread amongst the model guidance from some of these simpler models. Uh, some of these models in here are your more simple, what we call beta and advection models. Um, and kind of a remnant of the old BAMs. Remember those? The BAMS, the Beta and Advection Model Shallow. Well, they still have these are just different versions of them. This is shallow if the system's not very convectively active. This is medium if it's kind of half-baked. And D for deep is a fully developed tropical cyclone. All right, and so that one, the green one, fully developed, yep, it looks like it will come on up, it agrees with the h -warf. So there's some value to these. Again, it's guidance. That's why the word guidance is guidance. It's not, here's what's going to happen. And let's make a very, very big distinction here that we're all on the same page. This is all guidance of, about what could happen. None of this has to happen. You understand? These systems do not have to develop. There's no will behind them forcing them to develop. You know, we anticipate that they will. It's part of this busy season that we are in anticipating as well. But there's no um, force that says these have to develop, you know, no matter what. Mathematically, it's almost a certainty that they will in some form or fashion. Um, but just remember that, that 90% is not the same as 100%, 80%. I think I wrote a blog about that back in 2016, something about when 80% is not enough or 90, whatever it was, it was about what eventually became uh, Hurricane Hermine, if I am not mistaken. So anyway, look at the models here, the guidance still difluent or divergent there in the longer ranges. We don't like to see that much spread. Uh, for the time being though, maybe some impacts, we'll just go back to the satellite real quick. Maybe a little bit of rain shower activity. There's some trying to get over to Jamaica now. Um, and as this wave of energy, this wave of low pressure, this tropical low moves your way towards Jamaica, which is right there. Yeah, you might see some showers maybe rolling in from the east and the east-northeast as it that tries to pinwheel around this general area of low pressure that's sitting down here, the envelope of energy um, so I know several of you that watch these videos from Jamaica. Let me know how things are going if you don't mind. All right. The intensity guidance for 97 is kind of interesting. You know, generally speaking, again, that ramping up overall. And then the H wharf, <clears throat> I guess it's assuming landfall. Uh, that's why it tails off like that. Uh, and these other ones are making landfall at some other earlier point. It just depends on which where the tracks of these models are. You know, so as an example, the H wharf, which is this purple, you see right there at 96 hours, and then after that it tails off. Why does it show that? Well, let's go back to the map. That's because at that point, right at 96 hours, it makes landfall, and after that it's over Alabama. So you're darn tootin' that it's gonna tail off. So some of these other models in here, maybe these are making landfall uh, elsewhere, probably along Central America. You understand, so that's why we see those tail off. And then, of course, the global models down here for intensity, you know, nothing to speak of. So, on we watch.
All right, speaking of watching, uh, let's turn this off. Okay. Um, speaking of watching, we'll uh, watch what's going on. Look at that. What a completely different ball game here. And this is what totally blows my mind. This is tightly clustered guidance. Look at that. You've got your consensus at the top, the TVCE and the A. And then you go down the list there, the HMON, which replaced the GFDL, the H Wharf, that's the dark red, burgundy, whatever. The CMC is in there. The AE, AEMI, which is like the, um, the ensemble mean for the aviation or GFS. Um, anyway, they're all just tightly fit. I mean, wow, that's incredible how that envelope is just so small. So you would think, huh, the models have a great handle on this. Looks like a threat here to the Northeast Caribbean. And then maybe skirting north of the islands there, that could be a big problem because if it doesn't go over those islands, it could be stronger. I mean, you know, you look at this and you think there must be some confidence. But then, you know, as well as I do, the GFS and the Euro are just like, what 98L? What hurricane? What storm? I don't see one. That's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's not like unprecedented. There's, it's just different than I'm used to seeing where things seem to line up in some kind of a, 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 an orderly fashion. You get an invest area, it becomes a depression, a storm, a hurricane, and it does what it does, and the models are generally pretty good with it. But man, this time around, um, I don't know. And then you look at this guidance and it's like, what? So the bottom line here, and let's focus on that, and that's what I want to end this on, is all right, we know, looking at the satellite imagery, that we've got this large, and in fact, did I kill it off? I had a, a close-up visible. That's fine. Uh, we know that we've got this very large weather feature sitting out east of the islands. And all of this is not just going to go away overnight, and so it's going to move in this general direction over the next couple of days. So yes, you folks from Guadalupe, Antigua, um, St. Bart's, Mirko, you know, our good friend Mirko, if you remember him from the Tracking the Hurricanes 2017 and Hurricane Irma. I've gotten to know him over social media. Um, he dealt with Irma. But yeah, St. Bart, Anguilla, uh, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, and into Puerto Rico, you all need to be watching this closely. Because if this is what it looks like now, and what do we notice? Let's just zoom in on, uh, on this. Da -da -da. That'll help. Uh, what do we notice structurally? Well, definitely developing the outflow and that S shape overall. Um, you can see the outflow is an upper level low over here, probably ventilating this system this way. Uh, deep convection coming in there, the, the convergence of everything. It's coming together. And that's what I don't understand about this. It's developing right in front of our eyes. But these two big global model powerhouse uh, numeric weather prediction models, the Euro and the GFS, really don't do much with it. So very, very confounding, at least in the operationals. What we call the ensemble guidance is a different story, um, and we'll worry about that later. But really I want to focus on what's coming. Okay, so first up, you folks here, there's Guadalupe. So I'd say certainly from Guadalupe and points north and west from there, uh, you better be ready for this. The possibility of a strengthening tropical storm in the next 48 to 60 hours or so. Around there, all right? So be ready, all right? Gusty wind, squally conditions, small craft get tossed about in the harbors, lightning if this thing is convectively active. Some of those feeder vans could bring tropical storm conditions. I think we are going to see either a potential tropical cyclone advisory package at 11 or full on, hey, TD 12 or 11 or whatever the heck we're up to now uh, has formed and we will get advisors. I think that's coming as long as this satellite image continues to improve. All right, so that's the tracks. Look at the uh, intensity. So this is interesting because Again, a general slope up by almost all of the intensity guidance, but there's your global model output right there, just for, you know, okay. 
Um, that's the AVN I, which is again, it's like the GFS interpolated, I believe is what it means, but the GFS doesn't do much with it. But again, I see these little outliers. You know, the HWARF did it yesterday is like Cat5, the HMON today, which replaced the GFDL. These right here, the, the HMON, that's the blue one, and the HWARF are hurricane specific models. Money, research, and programming are all put in to those models specifically to forecast tropical cyclone track and intensity. So we see the uh, H wharf there, uh, fairly conservative overall, does make it a hurricane. So just in terms of impacts, let's address that real quick. Let's look at the H wharf at face value from the 12Z run today. It looks kind of like what? What am I? Is that a Rorschach test? Uh, an ink blot test, right? So uh, this is our three. Let's just kind of move this on, and you'll see it slowly take shape over time. The H wharf gradually bundles this together, which I find interesting because it's already bundling together. It is, and you know this is uh, 27 hours out, and in the H wharf model, it's just kind of, eh. but clearly in reality already. It's looking, you know, more like that already, 45, 48 hours out. So it's hard to tell what's what because it's still moving across the ocean there without any land masses. But now we get close here at 63 hours. This will be valid late Friday night and into early Saturday. There's Guadalupe, and it's on that trajectory towards the islands here. And this is what I just want to make sure that you are aware of. And it starts to come together pretty well moving across into the Eastern Caribbean through the uh, Northeast, really the Irma track is what it looks like. But hopefully, <laughs> please not the Irma intensity. Pressure down about 979. You got the Virgin Islands all through here. Uh, Vieques over here, Puerto Rico. And that goes right through there. Banding showing up in the modeling. You know, Again, this is a specific designed model with a specific purpose and that is for hurricane intensity rolls right over San Juan in vicinity and then kind of gets tangled up over the islands and as you can imagine that's going to do a big number on it uh, and it would hugely influence what happens later as we go on through to our number 120 right over the spine of the greater Antilles there and the H wharf is which one of these that little burgundy color right there basically it's that one that I'm highlighting for you right over the spine of the islands so a little bit more north uh, whatever you know what can happen uh, and how many have done that they avoid these islands Isaias just did it um, Maria plowed of course right over the top of Puerto Rico every one of these is different my main focus here as you folks down in the islands from Guadalupe, Montserrat, Anguilla, British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, all the way over to Puerto Rico, you are up first to deal with this potentially as a strengthening tropical storm, and that's what you need to take away uh, from this discussion. You know, things will change tomorrow. We'll get the overnight guidance. We'll see what's happening with the system structurally, see what the Hurricane Center says. And we'll see. Still no easy answers. What I am a little concerned about is the longer this takes to develop and get a name, the closer it is to big population areas. And if it were to quickly strengthen, then we don't have as much time to deal with it. Um, so that's the importance of this video, you know, to make sure you're aware. So, you know, absolutely share this video with your friends, family, colleagues. Let them know, look, we got to really watch this. Not that there's much to worry about now. A lot of people get fixated on that. Is it a hurricane now? Is it a tropical storm now? What do you mean? It's an invest? What's that? It's just a disturbance? Ah, whatever. And on the other extreme, we don't want to be seeing people posting, Cat 4 hurricane headed for Florida. Maybe there's one model that shows. You know, that, come on. As my good friend Greg Nordstrom says, the truth usually lies in the middle. And in this case, what we call the consensus or the overwhelming majority of what we're all thinking is the middle of those extremes. There's not 
You can't say there's nothing happening, because there is. We can see it. But a Cat 4 into Florida or somewhere else right now, we're not ready to do that either. It's kind of down the middle. Keep your eyes peeled. Avoid, you know, you'll, you'll know BS when you see it. You do. You see it, the clickbait, whatever. Uh, try not to talk negatively about others, but you know what I'm talking about, all right? So just stay focused, and <laughs> we'll see what happens together. That's the good part of this. We can all learn together. I love your feedback on YouTube, on Twitter, Facebook. Um, it's just fantastic. Uh, so, of course, I'm on Twitter. Speaking of that, the little birdie there, at Hurricane Track. Follow along. I do post often on Twitter, especially during field missions. YouTube, at Hurricane Track, of course. And uh, that's grown very significantly, and I thank you all for that. And then our crowdfunding group here on Patreon, not only funding what we do by their support, but they have access to our entire toolkit of stuff, especially when there's a landfall coming. And a big thank you to all of our newest patrons and supporters. You're what's going to make this really work. You're allowing me to be able to support my family and the project. Uh, and, and boy, it's really going to show. So if you're interested in that, the link to it is always in the description. All right, so that is it from me for this evening. Uh, don't stay up all night watching the models, please. No need to do that. You need your rest. And I'll follow that same advice myself, and I'll be back with you in the morning, and we'll do two more updates tomorrow. All right? Have yourselves a great evening, as always. Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me. It's much appreciated. I am Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow morning.